Hello there and thank you for joining me once again. And today I'm going to tell you a dry fly pattern. It's just a simple standard dry fly pattern and it's constructed in the same manner as you would most of the uh, cat scale dries or wolf patterns. And it's just more or less a dark Hendrickson. I just, in one exception, I I'm using beaver fur for the uh, body. And I just wanted to show you how I put these guys together. So I'll get this one out of the vise. A fresh hook in, get started for you here. And the hook I'm using is a number 12 TMC 100 standard dry fly hook. So we'll get him locked down in the vise here. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now. I'm using UTC 70 denier and a dark brown for the thread. So first thing we'll do is get a thread base start right behind the eye here and we'll just gonna wrap this guy back about halfway on the shank. Then you'll come forward about halfway onto that thread there and that's where we're gonna place our wing. And I use this method for mostly all my dry flies and this it's a caddis or something like that. Yeah, the wing I'm using mallet flank dyed wood duck. And one little tip when it comes to selecting your feathers for your dry fly wings, these type of wings, is try to find a feather that is nice, even tips across, all the way across. It's just that it'll make it easier to tie and easier to uh, make it turn out to be a half decent wing when you're done. And you just take that and stroke those fibers together, sort of roll them in your fingers. So you get them all bunched up like so here. Okay. There we are. Just like so. And you get them bunched together like so. Now, what you do is just simply place that on top. We're going to measure that so it's about the same length as our hook shank there. And then we're going to move it forward. Place it on top. And we'll come around with a pinch loop. I usually do a couple. Snug it down tight and wrap back two to three wraps like so. Make sure it's right on top. Okay, then we'll take our section in the back here, then we'll trim that on a slight angle, just like so. Okay, next step is we're going to lift up on those fibers and we're going to build a little thread dam in front to prop our wing up. Might take eight to ten wraps to get that to stand up for you, just like so. Like that there. Now, there's a couple ways you can go about splitting your wings. One way is you can just take your fingers and divide it, or you can take, hold them up and take it your dubbing your bubkin needle here, your dubbing needle, and split them. But this time I'm just going to take them and split them with my fingers. Just try to get the uh, same amount on each side so that your wings have the same amount of fibers on each side just like so and then just come up around with your thread and make a X wrap between your wings just to get them divided to start with here so that's more or less what we got there now we just divided the sections now what I'll do is bring my thread up around. What I do is just take figure eight wraps at the base of those wings. Just figure eight through them like so. I'll do that two to three times. Just like that. And then I'll stop. Make one wrap behind the wings. And then I'm going to pull down, snug that down. And that should set those wings in place once you pull down nice and tight. There we go. And just wrap a couple more wraps behind. And just have a look and see if you got even bunches in your wings there. They look pretty good, pretty much the same amount on each side, so that's fine. Then one thing I will do is take a little drop of hit cement. I always do this and just a little drop in between your wings there on the thread wraps. Just like so, if I can get it to come out of the bottle here. Okay. And that there will help hold your wings in place and make it make them stay divided a lot more durable. 
just being a little fussy here, folks. Got a couple fibers there I don't like. I'm going to snip those out. It's no big deal. And one more. Okay, and there's our wings. Upright and divide it and set the way we want them. And you can use that method on hair wings as well. If you're using like calf tail, deer hair, or bucktail for the wings, you can use the same method. Okay, now we're just going to wrap that back down over the butt ends of the wing, back towards the uh, bend of the hook. And I'm going to come to uh, just in front of my barb there. Now, the tail is just simply. I didn't mention for the hackle I'm using what is called honey dun. It's a honey dun color, but you can also use medium dun or dark blue dun if you don't have honey dun. And uh, just select one feather off the side of the cape with some longer fibers, and I'm gonna strip some of those off. Probably 15 to 20 fibers for the tail. You don't want too heavily a tail on this guy. And I'll pull those off. Make sure my tip stayed even, just like so. Now we'll measure that up. We wanted about the length of the hook shank, so I'll come along the side there and measure it. And I'll switch hands and I'll place it on top, just like so here. Okay. Now I'm gonna, as you wrap back, if you lift up on your tail, that'll keep your tail right on top of the shank. It won't roll to one side or the other on you. I'm coming back to just above the barb, and then I'll wrap forward, and there's our tail. Then I'm going to come in and snip those fibers to where they meet, where the wing butt's left off there. So we have a smooth transition as I tie back. Now we'll wrap back, just like so. Okay, there's our tail. Now we're ready for our body. And as I mentioned, I'm using some beaver dubbing for the body, some gray beaver dubbing. And I'm just going to put a tad bit of wax on the thread here. Now in dry fly bodies, as we, as you know, less is always more. You don't want to get the bodies too, too thick on them, but you also want a slight taper as well. So just keep, keep your dubbing amount sparse as you dub it on. this guy up here try to get a little more towards the end of the noodle so that'll give you that slight taper okay I'm gonna dub this on see where it brings me here and I always work back and I want my first wrap to be right directly in front of that tail and we're gonna proceed forward as you can see, I got a slight taper going there. Yeah, I need a tad bit more dubbing, so. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more on here. Finish off the body. Okay, and there's our body. You can see the slight taper from the back to the front and it's not too th too thick of a body okay now I got two hackles I selected and I already sized them for the ho size hook and one thing I'll show you another little tip when you're preparing your hackles on the one side that's going to be coming around wrapped down on the side of the shank you always want to strip off oh eight to ten fibers on the side as you can see there on this side right there and that way when you go to wrap it around you don't have hackles shooting off to the side you give them they stay fairly nice and parallel for you nice and straight just thought I'd mention that little tip okay now I'm going to tie these two guys in here and I like to tie them in on about a oh, about a 45 degree angle or so okay and I'm going to wrap back on those stems to right behind the wing then I'll jump in front, continue wrapping them down. Then I'll come in and snip them off right behind the eye here. Tips of that hackle. And another little tip is try to keep your thread 
from the body to and where you're going to tie off the hackle a little bit smooth and an even thread base that way when you wrap the hackle it'll be, you'll find it much easier to wrap and you'll have a neater looking hackle when it's done as you can see that's a nice smooth smooth section there of thread to wrap my hackle on alrighty so next step is the wrapping so I'll grab my hackle pliers here and we'll begin to wrap now we'll take that first hackle and the thing about wrapping hackle on dry flies is you always want to try to get the same amount of wraps each time with each hackle so for example if you do two to three behind two to three in front you want to do that same thing with your uh, next tackle so we'll begin to wrap here and go right behind the wing and I'm going to jump right in front and that, that wrap that goes in front try to get as close to the wing as you possibly can and we're going to wrap that one more wrap and I'm going to tie it off when I come up this time okay we'll make two or three good snug wraps here to wrap that tip down and we'll snug it down I'm going to release the pliers here okay that guy snipped off but that's okay he was tied down good if you got any stray fibers you just snip those off and another little tip I'll show you here in a sec once you wrap the second hackle Okay, when you wrap your second hackle, which I always do anyway, and I find it makes a big difference, is you want to wiggle that hackle back and forth as you go. That way you'll trap down much fewer hackle fibers from your first hackle. Just like so. And we're going to jump in front once again, nice and close to that wing. Just keep zigzagging that hackle back and forth, like so. Let's wiggle it side to side. Okay. Now the other trick, or excuse me, the other tip I was going to tell you is when you come up around, always tie your second hackle off if you can in the exact same spot you tied the first hackle. And the reason being is that'll give you a nice even distribution. Distribute your hackle nice and even around the the shank, and that'll balance your fly much better, and it'll set on the water better for you. And okay. And I got one straight fiber there. I just want to snip it. It didn't quite go the way I wanted it. There we go. And we're going to snip this tip off here. Nice and close. Okay, and we're going to bind those fibers down there from the hackle tip build a small head you don't want too big a hit on it where it's a dry fly alrighty we're pretty much done here just checking my hackle make sure I'm happy with that everything looks pretty decent on it nice full hackle alrighty the only thing left to do now is our whip finish so I'll grab my whip finisher here I'm going to whip finish this guy off. Get four or five turns on him. Just be careful we don't wrap your, any of your hackles down. Alrighty. Here we go. Snug it down nice and tight. And I'll come in and snip off the excess. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can show you here what I was talking about. You, you, see, you want your hackles, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you want a nice even, your hackle nice, distribute nice and even around the shank. That way you'll get a much better balanced fly on the water. So last step is to take a little bit of a I like to use my solar as bone dry here for the thread wraps 
just come in and put the slightest amount on, not too much. Just around on the head of the fly. And be really careful not to get any on your hackle. Okay, there we go. So I'll cure that up and he's a done deal. Okay. Okay, so there's another size 12. I guess I'll call them the Beaver Beaver Dry, or use Beaver Dubbing for the body. It's just a pattern I come up with myself. It's, but like I say, it's similar to the uh, Dark Hendrickson. It would work well to match your dark color mayflies. And I wanted to show you how, I, how the basics of constructing the uh, a dry fly using uh, mallard flank feathers or calf tail, buck tail, anything. You can tie them all in the same manner. So anyway, that's enough of me ranting. I want to thank you all for watching once again. And if you have the materials, I'd give this guy a try and add a few to your box for sure. It's a versatile dry fly. And anyways, until next time everyone, if you have and before I go, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for sure if you'd like to see more videos in the future. And throw in a like too if you wish. Appreciate that a great deal. And if you have any comments, leave them below. I'll always read your comments and see what you got to say. So, until next time everyone, happy tying out there. We'll see you all again soon and uh, so long for now folks.